Baruch Hashem, Rabbi Sai, we are back. Baruch Hashem, Mishalayim, we're back with Yeshua, we're back with Yeshua, we're back with Torah, we're back with Yeshiva. Ah, it's Kavaldik to see everybody, it's Kavaldik to be back. It's Kavaldik to start again. Rabbi Sai, I want to start this month with a very, very important Nogeya, practical Lemaisa Halacha, which is going to be Nogeya Be'ez HaShem, and it is Nogeya on a every Shabbos basis. You know, sometimes you have those Malachas that are like, Okay, every so often it's Nagea, when it happens it's Nagea, you know, if you know about it, it's Nagea, then certain malachas are Nagea every single Shabbos. There doesn't exist a Shabbos, in my opinion, if you intend on eating on Shabbos, that doesn't have this Shaila incorporated within the Shabbos Kodesh. Okay? And that is the Gavaldiga Malacha of Bishal. Bishal, there is no Shaila on Shabbos, is probably one of the most Nagea practical Lemaisa malachas that apply on Shabbos Kodesh. Okay, now, I don't think we've given Shir on Shabbos this year, am I right? Yeah. We haven't, right? It's the, it's the, first, it's the first time we're doing Hilchah Shabbos. So let me start like this, Rabbi Sai. Let's just start like this. I'm not, not going to give too much of a Hagdama. Those of you that are joining the, uh, I'm very excited about this, by the way, the Halacha uh, Chabura, starting Be'ez HaShem this afternoon. Yeah! So there's going to be, it's Gavaldi, very, very exciting. Um, which yeshiva has a group of bochum steiging, learning halacha from Bi'in all the way to halacha lamaisa? Which yeshiva? Okay, so you're going to hear Agdoma as well, but I want to give the guys a little bit of Agdoma ah, into Shabbos Kodesh. Shabbos Kodesh, as we know, is the Yisoyed of Aramunas, the Yisoyed of Yiddishkeit, it's the Yisoyed of a Yid. So much so that when you want to identify, and this could be right or wrong, but if you want to identify a from Yid, when was the last time you heard someone being called, oh, he's a shame kashrus. He's a shame tefillin. Right? Well, we don't generally say these things. Right? We say, he's a shame of Shabbos. Because the shame of Shabbos is very often the definition of what a yid is. Now, I want to tell you something. The Chobetz Chaim says this. In the of Chelek Gimel and Mishnah There is no way, it's not shaykh in the veld, that a person can actually keep Shabbos if he doesn't know the halachas. It's all very nice. Yeah, we Rebbe, we want to keep Shabbos. But if I don't know what to do, if I don't know how to keep it, so it's not a gear. Like the Chofetz Chaim says, if a person doesn't know, and he's not a bucky in Hilcha Shabbos, he's being over so many times. I once made a cheshben, how many times a person is over on Issa Shabbos, if he doesn't know the basic halachas, I'm not talking about bi'in, I'm not talking about lomdas, basic halachas. One made a chajim, 176 times, he's over on chilul Shabbos, many of them da'araisa, chilul Shabbos da'araisa, on things he doesn't even have, on things he doesn't even know. So we're dealing with like serious, I'm not dealing with drabonons and xeris, we're dealing with da'araisas, okay? Dealing with, I'll give you an example by the way. Merdiga, this opened my eyes a number of years ago, I had a koilal in a chassidish place, chassidish of Medrash, and this chassidish guy turns to me and he says to me like this, he says to me, ooh, I have a gewalde gazak that I do, I fill the cholent Friday night with extra water. Now it happens sometimes that it burns out and it needs, you know, it needs a little more, you know, it needs some more liquid, it needs some water, so I fill it up with water. I said, what do you use? He said, what do you mean? I take pre-filtered water. Right, because can't, you can't use regular water. So he takes pre-filtered water, it's filtered, and this way he puts it into the cholent on Shabbos Kodesh. I said, and that's Gewaldic. How many years have you been married? He said, what do you mean? I've been married 14 years. This is Gewaldic. I said, that's Gewaldic. You haven't kept Shabbos one Shabbos in your life since you're married. And on Shemi Rachim. But boy, say, I, I want to tell you something else also, by the way. This is very important. You guys think, okay, this is Hilcha Shabbos. Okay, you know, oh, I need to know. I don't need to know. First of all, when you get married, all of a sudden it's like, maybe what I do now? Like, you know, it's like, whoa, all of a sudden, a crash course, call that Torah cooler before you get married. Rabbi said, I'm giving you right now, Shalom Bayesh Urim. It's in the form of Hilcha Shat. What's the Pshat? Very simple. Imagine, you get married, Be'ez HaShem, Be'itu Bizmane, all at the right time, Be'siyat HaDishmaya. You get married, and your wife's going to say to you, ah, oh, Yankala, my dear Yankala, you learned in Yeshiva for so long. Tell me something, am I allowed to take off the lid on Friday night to give a, a good, a good schmeck. They want to smell the chun on Friday night and I'll put it back on. So you're like, one second. Um, when I learned Boba Metzia, there was a Shiloh and Tosus there about whether or not, but, but, you have to learn Boba Metzia, but, 
It's Kavaldic, but if you don't know the halachas, so your wife's going to say, not only did she marry an Amaretz, but she married the Mechal Shabbos. She probably married the Mechal Shabbos, like he doesn't know anything. Okay? If you know these things, and by the way, your wife's going to know all of these things, right? Because she went to seminary. And she learned all the halachas. So she's coming in, right? The, she's coming in with, she's the Rav. How is that going to make you feel when you have to ask your wife all the Shilas? Okay? It's not, it's not a joke. You now a woman once called me up, and she asked the Shiloh, so innocently I answered the Shaila and I heard on the phone, the Maisa Shaya, she puts the phone, she says to her husband, you see, I told you you were wrong. I'm like, oh no, That's, you, have to, you have to know, Rabbi said, you've got to know this stuff. This is basic stuff. I don't believe anybody can walk near a kitchen or food if you don't know these halachas. The Right before he made Kiddush, right before he made Kiddush, you know what he did? He did Chazorah of the whole Hilcha Shabbos. Can you imagine? A Chazorah of the Gantzah Hilcha Shabbos. How can you go into Shabbos without knowing Hilcha Shabbos? It's Pasha not Nagea. Basic things. Basic things. Taking off the lid of a cholent. Taking out the cholent to take some, putting it back on. What about taking salt and putting it into your cholent on Shabbos, putting it into the chicken soup? What about putting matzah? But matzah in the chicken, in the chicken soup, I'm not discussing Pesach with Gebrachts. Some people are traumatized, you know. We are allowed, they're not allowed. Achach Pesach, it was Shabbos. What do you do in such a case? When Achach Pesach, you're allowed to have Gebrachts, but it was on Shabbos. Are you allowed to put matzah in your soup? Yeah. What about putting... Second days, second days. Huh? Second days, but it was on Shabbos this year, so how does it work? All right. What about putting... A very famous dessert that people make is they have a hot chocolate cake and you put a scoop of ice cream next to it. Yeah. Or let's say, for example, let's say in Eretz Yisrael, this is, this is Gavaldic, right? You guys came back just for this. Is when you go to a Kiddush, you get a piece of Yerushalmi Kegel, and what's next to it? The pickle! Gavaldic! Uh, is that allowed on Shabbos? Is that even a Shaila? Lipa, is that even a Shaila? Like, what's the Shaila with that? I know there's a Shaila for Brochas, that we know. Do you have to make a Broch on the pickle? Is it Ica? Is it Toffel? But like Shabbos? Seriously? All these things we have to worry about, what's it all about? Rabbi Sai, we're going to embark on a journey of practical Hilchas Shabbos, Hilchas Bishel. It's going to take us a few shiurim, Bezuz Hashem. But if you guys listen and you concentrate and you're here, I guarantee you, the is the knowledge of Hilchas Shabbos and Hilchas Bishel you will have will be unparalleled. Okay? There's a lot of practical things. Making coffee. How many ways are there to make coffee? Tea. All these sorts of things. These are shilas every single week. We're all familiar. Everybody here is familiar with the Ramah and Simon Ration and Tess, right? The Ramah and Simon Ration and Tess brings down the famous Bala Ma'or that says that if a person doesn't eat hot food on Shabbos Kodesh, we have to look into his yichas. Right? It could be his amin, could be who knows where he comes from, who knows what the yichas is. doesn't eat hot food on Shabbos Kodesh. As I eat. No, no, it's not shayach. Remember, everybody has hot food. The moment you have hot food, how are you heating it up? How are you heating up? What if Erev Shabbos is putting the cholent on? With a blech, without a blech? Tell you, Moti Kamaisa. A guy calls me up Erev Shabbos. A bocha for Shneitzach. A bocha calls up Erev Shabbos. He's making Shabbos on the beach. Making Shabbos on the beach. Okay? No, Rabbi said, don't try this one at home. Okay? Don't try this one at home. He made Shabbos on the beach. So there were Shilas with a tent, there were Shilas with an Eruv, the Shilas were going in the water because they're building rafts for Shleitzach, right? Building rafts, Mamish on the water there. You got Shilas as Schrita with the hair, Mikveh, you know, Shabbos morning. But one of the Shilas was this. He's making a huge bonfire and he's putting the chicken soup on there. So he's going to build up a whole, like, like a whole pile of twigs and whatever and wood. He's going to light it on fire, Erev Shabbos. He's going to put his pot, pre-made pot, onto the fire with chicken soup. Is he allowed to do that? Does it need a blech? How do you make a blech? All of these sorts of shinas are so negea when it comes to all sorts of things. And even if you're not making Shabbos on the beach and you're simply making it in your kitchen, in your house, you have to know blech, no blech. What does a blech mean? How exactly do you cover things? How do you put things back if you take them off? It's a shinas, mamas, 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 So I say a lot to discuss, a lot to do. Today I just want to go into a little bit of a hagdoma. What is Bishel? What is the definition of Bishel? Now, we have to understand before we do this, and this is something we have to repeat again and again, what is the definition of a Melocha? A Melocha on Shabbos, as we know, is not necessarily work. That's Avoida. What's the difference between the word Melocha and the work and the word Avoida? Melocha and Avoida. So, Rav Shimshim Rafal Hirsch is a Modik Apshat. Shimshim Rafal Hirsch Allah Torah says, Malacha comes from Malach. Avoid comes from Eved. What's the difference? 
Because an Eved is a slave. What is the definition of a slave? Someone that has to fulfill whatever his master says. It might not make any sense, it might not mean anything, it might not do anything, but his, his master told him to do it, so he does it. What's a Malach? A Malach has a tachlis, has a mission in this world. That the Rabbani Shon put in this world a Malach to have a mission. That's the Loshan Malacha. Loshan Avoidu is work. Work could mean schlepping a couch from one end of the house to the other end of the house. That's mutter. That's not a problem because there's no tachlis, nothing happened. You didn't create something. If you want to go even deeper, al pi kabol in the Zoya state, that the Rabbani Shon created the world with 39 malachas. And therefore those are the 39 malachas that are Asher and Shabbos because the Rabbani Shon stopped creating on the seventh day. Mimele, we have to stop creating and therefore the 39 malachas are corresponding to the 39 malachas that the Rabbani Shon created in the world, created the world with. Mimele, we have to stop. On a poshet level, the Rabbani Shon stopped creating on, on Shabbos in a general way and therefore we have to stop creating, which means a malacha is a creation. Every malacha is a creation. You're doing something. Even, says Tosis in the beginning of the Sechtos Shabbos, saw when I'm taking something from inside the house to the street, is a malacha, because I've created a new metzias, a new environment for this tissue, for whatever it may be. When it comes to bishal, it's no different. You've created something. What have you created? You've taken a raw piece of chicken, a raw piece of meat, a raw potato, something which is basically not edible, or even if it is edible, but you've changed the form into something new. It's got a new usage, it's got a new name, it's got a new metzias. That is the malacha of Bishel. And that is generally the whole Yisoyed of Bishel. And we're going to talk about it and we're going to use it for many different examples that we're going to discuss to see whether or not it is Bishel or it's not Bishel because it has to fit into that category. I'll give you an example. The Gemara says in Shabbos, I indalad on the base. Hai man de tuna. Rashi says it's like a wet peg into the oven. Right, that's the makor of all of Hilchos Bishel. Zuk the Gemara chayiv mishum Bishel. Fet the Gemara pshita vade chayiv mishum Bishel. You've heated something. So the Gemara says that I would have said lemaisa it goes hard and it goes soft and it goes soft and it goes hard different directions. But I'll upon him the side of the Gemara is that when you change something by making it soft, this is the Rambam Sagdora. When you change something from either hard to soft or soft to hard, that's the Hagdora Bishel. I'll give you an example. Two shailas, which are very very simple shailas. Shaila number one. Somebody asked like this, they're in a hotel, a non-kosher hotel, and they're operating on Shabbos as normal. They brought themselves bread with them. They want to know, on Shabbos morning, are they allowed to go over to the electric toaster? It's a toaster with a conveyor belt that moves by itself. Nothing happens when you go near it. Nothing happens when you put something on it. And they'll take their own piece of bread, and they will place it on one side of the conveyor belt. It will go to the other side. It will become toast on the other side. Are you allowed to do that on Shabbos? Okay? Same thing, can you take a soft boiled egg and turn it into a hard boiled egg? Okay, it's soft boiled, so it's edible, can I turn it into a hard boiled egg? What if, for example, you have these new um, souffles, right? Now the souffles that they make have liquid inside them. Are you allowed to heat those up or are they going to become more cooked? What about a steak that's not fully cooked, it's medium rare, and you want to turn it from medium rare to medium well? That's it, medium rare is too cooked? Yeah. That's subject to personal opinion. You understand? These are shadows that we have to get to. We're crossing a line. Before, we, before Rabbi said we've got a lot of shadows to deal with, let me ask the Oedem Mishayla. The Oedem know what, knows what's a, a grammar? What's a grammar? Anyone know what a grammar is? Anybody? Huh? It causes something to happen. Rabbi said about the Mishayla. Simple Shaila. You take the Malacha of Bishal. It's very interesting. I take a pot of chicken soup which is raw. In there is chicken that's raw, vegetables, some spices, and regular, regular water. I put it onto the fire. Is it cooked right now? Is it cooked? Yes. It's cooked. Wow. How do you do that? Like the conveyor belt situation. Is it cooked or not, Rabbi Sai? No. It's not cooked. When you hide for Bishel? <laughs> when it starts cooking, even though it's raw? When you do that, when you do the action. Which action? Putting it on. Yeah. It's raw. I'm chai for bishul without being cooking anything. No. I'm chai for bishul without cooking. I'm not cooking. It's going to be cooking an hour and a half. So it's a grammar. I'm causing it to happen. I'm chai for a grammar? I chai for sprinkling salt on cucumbers. So that's different. That's because it's ma'abid. Shulchan Aruch and Semin Shinchov Aleph says that of other it's also. That's posh. Everyone knows that. Come on. No, Aaron, what are you tying What are you chai for? Let me ask another shaila. Bin Chaschin is clear as the Shaila. If you take a seed and you put it into the ground, 
When are you chay for zoya? For planting? Right now? Or when it actually takes root, which is how long? How long? No. How long? Almost three days. When are you chayev? So this Rabbi says, subject to Marchaikis to Minchas Chinuch and the Rashash. When are you chayev for Bishul? Zuk the Paiskin, the Chazanish says this claw. Zuk the Heilige Chazanish. Ah, the Chazanish. He says, I'm the Kazakh. He says, the whole Yisoyed of the Malachar of Bishul is a grammar. The way to do Bishul, the Mahalach, the Metzius of the Malachar, is it does not get cooked immediately. It takes time. Mimele is the Chazanish. Since it's a Malacha, that the whole Yisoyed of the Malacha is something that takes time, Yochayev, right now. Nafgamina, by the way. Nafgamina. What happens if a person, by mistake, switched on the kettle? So he has a choice. Either he leaves it, Shavuot Taisa Odif, I'll leave it, but it's going to get cooked. Or he'll find a way, maybe to a goy, of switching it off, and the water inside won't get cooked. If you hold that you're chayiv now, so it won't help you, switch it off, you're already chayiv. But if you hold your only chayiv later, so then what? Good, figure out a way, halakhically, to switch it off. I'm not chayiv official. That will be the nafkamina. Rabbi say tomorrow, Be'ez Hashem, we're going to go into some details of the halakha. Have a wonderful day.